everyone, and we're here back to talk about the Wilson County Drug Court Program. Actually, it's the 15th Judicial District yes, Drug Court Program, and we're here with the Drug Court Program Coordinator, Jeff Dixon. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the opportunity. I always love to, to talk about drug courts in this forum, and this makes it even better. Well, for those of us who may not know, or mm -hmm. people that are watching that may not know, what is the Drug Court Program? Drug Court Program is a sentencing option available to the court uh, for felony offenders that have a drug or alcohol addiction that has led to their contact with the court. Mm -hmm. um, there's an assessment process. Um, we identify candidates either through referrals from families, attorneys, the jail, the judge. Some, mm -hmm. some referrals come in open court where we, uh, we receive uh, uh, referrals uh, that uh, a possible candidate that has a uh, drug or alcohol addiction mm -hmm. and is looking for treatment. Mm -hmm. Now our participants are, are felony offenders, they're nonviolent felony offenders. Okay. So we, we emphasize and we put a lot of effort into our screening process. Right. So we try to identify those folks that have an interest in making a positive lifestyle change. Okay. And, and we provide the, the forum to do that. And what does that include? What does that involve? We have a, a treatment team. Uh, a drug court team. Uh, the head of the team is our drug court judge, Judge Brody Kane. Mm -hmm. uh, he has joined as our drug court judge with Judge uh, Wooden's retirement. Mm -hmm. We have a representative from the Public Defender's Office, uh, Miss uh, Miss Shelley Thompson Gardner. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a representative from the District Attorney's Office, and that's uh, Mr. Jimmy Lee. And we have uh, treatment representatives, representatives of state probation. We have our drug court staff uh, that um, are involved in the assessment uh, process and actually oversee the, uh, the drug court program. Okay, so the first step, they're assessed to make sure they qualify for the program, and then mm -hmm. what do they do once they become part of the program? What, what kind of treatment are they given to go through the program? This is actually, uh, it's very intensive with regard to the treatment supervision piece. We take our responsibility very seriously. We've, we've got felony offenders. They have their sentence imposed. So these are folks that uh, would be incarcerated were it not for our program. Okay. So we take that responsibility very serious. And um, the, the structure that comes with the program is not, on, not only a pretty stringent assessment process, but anybody that comes in makes a two-year commitment. Um, it's tw approximately 24 months to participate in the program. Mm -hmm. We start with uh, residential treatment, then we step down to an intensive outpatient, uh, and then individual therapy as identified by, by the treatment personnel. And, uh, and it never drops less than one therapeutic interaction uh, for the participant each week. In mm -hmm. addition to that, they're assigned uh, an intensive supervision probation officer with the state. Myself and my staff, we supplement that supervision. Mm -hmm. We're out in the community doing home visits, treatment verifications, random drug screening. So it's a pretty intensive process. And this uh, lasts for two years. Two years, yes ma'am. And then at the end of the two years, what happens then? They graduate from the program and then? We've hoped through, uh, through repetition that mm -hmm. we've introduced them to resources in the community that they can turn to uh, should a situation of a possible relapse return. Mm -hmm. We hope that we have given them resources and uh, um, uh, job opportunities, stable housing, so that once they graduate the program, they can make this, this lifestyle change. And that was going to be my next question about uh, employment. Does this mm -hmm. help in gaining employment? Because if they are a convicted felon, that could be a little tricky. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have uh, several employers that work with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been very fortunate with that regard. Right now with the economy, uh, there's a lot of employers that are, that are really begging for people. Right. So we, we've been fortunate with that. Uh, with regard to uh, to employment, housing is uh, uh, is is a major concern for us right. in this county. Um, a lot of our folks uh, come to us with some pretty poor histories mm -hmm. with regard to personal finance and right. and uh, the ability to procure safe and stable housing. So that's a chore for us, and mm -hmm. and we try to work with that. Our ultimate goal is to. 
uh, provide an intervention in the, the uh, cycle of reincarceration. Right. Uh, you know, folks that uh, under the influence of drug or alcohol commits an offense, appears in court, incarcerated, released, and that cycle repeats. Our goal is to intervene and stop that. Kind of break the cycle? Yes, yes. That's our primary goal. Right. And you said you've got a new program. Mm. It's kind of an offset of this program, a subsidiary of that. And that's mm -hmm. coming up, I guess it kicks off February 7th. This Friday. Okay. Or, yes, February yeah. 7th. And tell, tell us about that. This is something that just started. You just came up with this idea a few weeks ago. We're, 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 uh, we're, we're looking forward to this. We're excited about this, providing this service to the community. Mm -hmm. Um, we, uh, in, in recent weeks, we've encountered uh, some, uh, some uh, deaths that have been, uh, been related to our uh, uh, drug epidemic here. Um, it's uh, hit pretty close to home for us. Uh, we've known uh, these p few of these people. Mm -hmm. And as uh, myself, my case manager, Paul Langford, uh, Shelly Allison, we were reviewing what we need to do programmatically to, to maybe intervene. Mm -hmm. um, one, one of the ideas that came up was um, uh, providing uh, the opportunity for folks in the community to uh, make initial contact. Right. Um, and it just so happened during this period of time, we had a, uh, I believe it was a grandmother that reached out to us about uh, a grandchild that was, uh, was active in addiction Right. And she said, I, I really don't know what the first step is. So um, that planted a seed and we became uh, First Step Friday. Uh, we're going to uh, have some of our former graduates mm -hmm. that are active in recovery, a minimum two years of sobriety, active in recovery, know the local resources. Uh, they're going to be available to answer questions. Mm -hmm. It's not treatment. It is strictly education, information, and referral. Uh, we found that there are, there are websites out there, there are resources out there, but at a time of crisis, folks... They, don't, uh, they may not know about it. Exactly. Right. They, they feel more comfortable sitting down and mm -hmm. saying, um, what, what do I need to do first? Right. We opted to go with our former uh, graduates because they've actually been there and mm -hmm. done that. It's hard for you to talk about... If you've not ever been there. Being incarcerated right. if you've never been to jail. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we, we hope, and it's our desire, to make this a non-confrontational, it's confid confidential, mm -hmm. even though drug court, and um, uh, we're working with some folks at, uh, at uh, Drug Free Wilco, mm -hmm. um, even though they're working with us, this is, this is not an attempt to set anybody up. This is actually to provide a service. Right. That's why the flyers that we're handing out, there's not a, there's not a lead name on those because we don't want... We don't want to discourage, we want to encourage people to, to come out and participate if they can. And it's something that they can, it's confidential, they can come out and get some hopefully very valuable resources that they may not know to research online. We're, uh, the, the overdose problem, is, it's, uh, it's, a real, it's, it's a real issue. And it is. I mean, there's probably very few people that have not been indirectly affected by, by this. It's the ripples in a pond. Yeah. And I was, uh, as we were talking, our treatment team, that's when I really started to realize how many, just sitting around the table, uh, there were several people that said, well, you know, a friend of mine's, mm -hmm. you know, or, yeah. so, um, and then when we got the call from the grandmother, that was, that was again, just uh, uh, an indication that there's a real need out there to do this. Okay. And so Drug Free Wilco, mm -hmm. touch base on that. Tell us what that is again for people that may not know. Drug Free Wilco. Um, it's it an is initiative a, that has started with... Correct. Um, and it's uh, comprised of, uh, of different um, uh, parties within the community that have mm -hmm. particular uh, expertise. Uh, there's mm -hmm. education, there's law enforcement, um, there's um, uh, treatment, there's uh, drug courts and probation. It's a collaborative effort from the community mm -hmm. to provide awareness and identify uh, areas where we can, again, provide that, uh, that intervention. Mm -hmm. I think Ms. Susan Shaw with, mm -hmm. um, uh, with the mayor's office is my contact. That's who I, I go to. Right. And uh, she recently uh, provided us with some um, resource cards. I think, right. I We've think got some you of those guys resources. have seen those yes. too. And we'll be using those on uh, our first step Friday as well. So tell us about the resource cards. It's some quick contact numbers. Okay. Um, 
there's uh, tried to go through and identify uh, resources that are requested most frequently, mm -hmm. whether it be um, uh, crisis call lines, Tennessee Red Line. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you, what do you do if uh, uh, you're wanting to make that? And a lot of times, you got to strike pretty fast if somebody makes right. a commitment to get involved in recovery. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do? Where do they go? And these are some contact numbers that you can reach out to, and they, be, that would be ideal for someone who needs help. And right there's then. such a variety, and that's why the card itself. It's like a business card? Yes, kind of? yeah. and it's got easy, you can carry it with you. Uh, and um, uh, I have one in my jacket pocket. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a great resource mm -hmm. and it's quick and it, um, it's pretty thorough. There's a lot of resources on there. Great, well thank you so much. And I, I mean, I know that I speak for many people when I say this is a fabulous resource and I'm so glad you guys are doing it. I'm, I'm, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come out and talk about it. It's clearly a team effort. Right. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, a lot of folks involved and and we're ultimately trying to uh, to address drug problem. and alcohol problem. Right. Yes, ma'am. Well, real quick, tell people what's a phone number, a website that um, if people want more information on this. If what? they if they want more information, you can contact through uh, Drug Free Wilco. Mm -hmm. We also have a website on the county's website. Drug Court mm -hmm. is under the departments that are listed. Um, our drug court number is six one five four five three five three one four. Okay, perfect. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. And thank you. we hope you've given us some really valuable tips and hopefully that'll reach more people and they'll know more about this program. I appreciate that. Thanks for coming in thank and you. to us. Jeff Dixon, the Drug Court Coordinator for the 15th Judicial District. Thank, thank you, you. ma'am. Thanks so much.